Hi, today we are coming up with stuff to help you come out or to help you come out to people at work or your family or some combination of your friends and all of that. I've made a couple videos like this, but I think I have a lot of opinions and we're gonna do a deep dive on some of this. I'm actually giving a lecture in a couple weeks about this and maybe I'll post that later. So um, coming out, have you come out already? If you're probably watching this, if you're watching this, you, you are still watching this, right? <laughs> If you're watching this, you probably haven't come out or you're curious about how you can help others come out. So the main thing is you need to understand how you can approach the conversation. There's meta around how you approach that conversation. And depending on the context, whether it's a worker or your family, you may want to approach it differently. So we'll just do the family part because everyone has families and they need to come out to them eventually, right? There's a point where you may feel pressure to do this. Are you at that point? Where are you on that journey? If you feel like you're approaching that, now is the time to start thinking about how you're going to come out and writing down some of your thoughts so you can process yourself a little bit more and be prepared for this conversation. Coming into this conversation, I highly recommend how you want to think what a win is for you. Because if you think a win is they completely accept me, they completely take me in, and there's no sorts of conflict, that's going to set you up at a pretty high bar of expectation, and anything less is going to feel like a loss, and that's going to perhaps trigger you to feel defensive or to act in certain ways that may be more disagreeable. And that's not how you win a war. You're going to be fighting for a battle and not thinking about the long-term success of what you're actually trying to achieve. So what are you trying to achieve when coming out? That's kind of an important question to answer. I think most people when they're coming out is they want to come out so it's clear where you stand. And then when you can say where you stand, you can then just stand there and be yourself and continue to do that rather than being questioned or it being confusing or vague, right? But with parents especially, they are older. They are used to seeing you in one way that they've seen for your entire life. And so coming out to them is going to take some time and calibration. And you've been spending, I don't know, six months, a year, however long you have been processing this and figuring it out. And how long are they going to have? They're literally going to have one second to react and try and process it when you lay it on them. So I mean, don't you think that's a lot of pressure to to put on someone to expect them to fully accept you and embrace you completely without hesitance? That's where you want to insert a little bit of humbleness in how you approach the situation and say, you know what, these people have not processed this. I'm coming in here with complete vision of what I want to talk about. They have no idea. They have no freaking idea what I'm going to say right now. So maybe it's good to come at it with a little bit more patience and to give them a little bit more leeway in having hesitance to have their own objections, to raise them and to feel like they're heard so they can feel a part of the conversation rather than it just being a dictate. You're just going to tell them and they have to accept it and then it's end all be all kind of a thing. You know, that's a little bit more of an extreme conversation. I mentor people in, in coming out to their family and this is kind of the first thing that I say is, uh, come at it from winning the war rather than the battle. Think about the long term. Be patient with them because if you make it a battle that you're trying to win, you're going to create tension and you're going to create conflict around this conversation that will continue to grow and permeate in your relationship and that you'll have to continue to navigate. But if you approach this conversation in a peaceful way, in an understanding way, in a loving and caring way, that association that's pinned to that conversation can start at a good point. That doesn't necessarily mean it'll always end in a good way, but you can make progress. I was just talking to my friend, Jem, and she was like, uh, so I started the conversation by just talking about my name and said, you know, I don't think you've been using my name properly. And I haven't seen you try hard about that. And I was wondering if we could talk about that. I was wondering if you could uh, hear me a little bit about why I'm changing my name and why it's important to me. And that conversation is a great way to open up a conversation around why it's important and to underline it 
in a way that's non-conflicting and non-blamey. And perhaps you don't need to lay on them every single thing. Oh, like I'm transgender and I'm this and I'm that. I'm going to get a vagina and I'm going to get boobs and all, I'm going to... You don't need to lay it all on them the first time. Like give them bite sizes so they can process and work with it. It took my dad years to work through it, but he eventually did. And patience and showing up in a way where I was being understanding and trying to help with him move through it was super, super helpful. And that doesn't mean you need to always be peaceful. Sometimes conflict can come up. See my video about alchemizing, which I also am going to post or I've already posted. But like you do want to have a level of understanding and empathy for their situation. Sometimes you will have to kind of light things up a little bit and put your emotions out there on your sleeve and really show how much it means to you so you can underline to them how much it means to you. But let's not start the conversation there. You know what I mean? So about the coworker stuff, coworker stuff is a little different because now you're talking about professional relationships and you're talking about how you work in that dynamic and how you move through that dynamic. And one of the things that I recommend is having an email that you can send out to people that's pre-written, that has some of the main key points, which is basically, I changed my name, I changed my gender, please refer to me with these pronouns and please, that's my Discord, please refer to me with my name. And um, here are some questions that people commonly ask me. So here's the answers. And so you don't have to have that conversation. But I wouldn't do that first because that feels like a lot and that feels like a lot of pressure. I would probably just have one-on-ones with your manager and, and some of the people that you directly work up, work with. Just be like, hey, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm, tr I'm transgender and I realize that I need to come out at work and start changing how I present and how I dress and how I talk and how I'm referred to. I hope that's okay. I hope it doesn't change our working relationship because I really like working together and I really like working with you and I trust you, which is why I'm coming out to you and telling you this. Uh, and you're going to be seeing more change and I'm going to be talking to management and I'm going to be sending out an email later to come out to the larger company org so that everyone knows. But I wanted to tell you first. And isn't that flattering to say, I want to tell you first, I trust you, I like working with you, I love our relationship that we have. Like these are all bridge building exercises that help you build rapport and help you build allyship within your company so you have more support for what you want to do. This is another thing I'll say coming out at work, it's great to find your allies so that you have a little bit of emotional support and context at work. And I'll also flag that HR isn't necessarily your friend, but it's sometimes good to work with HR. HR treats you as a commodity and, you know, a resource. And so if things are not in their interest, they can be kind of like assholes. So you just kind of want to dance that a little gently. HR is not your friend. Your manager is technically not your friend. But you can navigate these things gently and uh, with their nuance where you can leverage them to really help support you. I mean, I walked up to the CEO, CEO and said, hey, I'm trans and uh, I noticed the bathrooms are binary. Could we like have a gender inclusive bathroom? Because right now I don't feel comfortable using the women's bathroom and I don't feel comfortable using the man's bathroom. And he said, yeah, let, let's make these changes. So, you know, it really just depends also on the company culture. Who else did I talk about? Oh, coming out to your friends. Same kind of deal. Use some of the tips that I used earlier compliment your friend, tell them, you know, I trust you. I love you. I like how we hang out. I want to tell you this and I don't know how to tell you this. So I'm just going to say I'm trans and this is what I want to do moving forward. I hope you're cool with it. And if you're not, I also totally understand no pressure. You could take some time to think through it and sort through it. I mean, isn't that like a very diplomatic and soft approach rather than coming at them super hard and saying, if you don't accept me, we're not friends. And if you don't get it right now, then shit's off the table. Fuck you. You know, <laughs> we don't need to start there. We don't. So those are some of the main tips. There's plenty more and I'll probably post more of these. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, share it with a friend and join our trans.club discord community and support me on Patreon if you want to give me some money or buy me a super thanks. I'll see you in another episode soon. Bye.